Sony released the almost perfect video camera for YouTube nerds like you and me. And everybody seems to be very, very high on it. And let's be honest, you want to buy it. And so do I. But luckily, I am here to argue, to reason, to explain to you why I, sorry, why you should not buy this camera. First of all, there's the weight. It's way too heavy, it's way too big. It's a full frame camera. I mean, you know that, but you know what that means? It's just a freaking heavy piece of brick. And the camera itself is 699 grams. You know how much that is? Like, you can't lift that. And that is without a lens. Put a lens on, you want a proper lens, get the G Master 16 to 35 millimeter for your vlogging, for holding it up. That thing weighs another 680 grams just as much as the camera itself. So we're looking at almost 1400 gram here, which is like three pounds. Nobody can lift that. And even worse than the weight, think about all that stress that comes with owning that camera. This might be the most stressful camera ever made. Well, unless you buy a more expensive one. And most of the stress comes from the price. Let's just check out how much that camera is. And just for the fun of it, let's look at European prices because they're even better than the American ones. Looking at a price comparison side here, body only, we are looking at 4,199 euros. 4,200 euros and you might think, ooh, yeah, that's steep. But for a little more than four grand, at least I get the best freaking mirrorless camera there is. We're wrong. The full frame lenses are just another very, very expensive, heavy, chunky piece of equipment. Let's check out the aforementioned G Master vlogging lens, because if you go with the A7S III, then you might as well go with the best vlogging lens they have, right? So if we take a look here at this online distributor, that lens is on sale. Hey, we're lucky, you wanna save 14%, Order it right now from Otto, no affiliate links below. That lens is still 2,328 euros and 64 cents. Adding that to the 4,200, we're looking at 6,500 and something euros. But it's still not running. So with all these fancy modes in there, you want the 4K 60p, you want the 4K 120p, you want those high bit rates, that 10-bit stuff, all that goodness, you need a special memory card. I have no idea about these memory cards because these are usually not spheres that I look at, but let's check it just out. On Amazon, I think it's a CF Express card. That stuff a YouTuber should never look at. So let's see what we got. Zendisk, nah. Prograde sounds good because you need that. All right, what we got here? We got the 265 gigabyte for 410 euros. That's like the price of a Canon SL2. I don't want to be limited in any way, so you might as well go for the 512 one. So we're looking at 640 euros for the memory card. Let's just add that to a six and a half grand and you're well above 7,000 euros. But then you're good to go, right? Unless you want a zoom lens. I kind of want a zoom lens. So let's just not look at that. Back to my point though, the stress. So you're running around with a mirrorless camera in your hands costing more than 7,000 euros. Think about you want to take that out. You want to get all these amazing nature shots. You want to take it everywhere. You want to take advantage of the amazing picture quality that that camera brings. Go over a river. You want to get a river shot close to the water or something? Well, I'm going to start sweating even thinking about that. Just one slip. Being on a boat. You want to film some wakeboarding or anything like that? You want to film a jet ski? How are you going to do that? You're going to be freaking stressed about your camera's safety. Or just in general, filming in the rain or in the dust. I dare you to take that thing to the beach. Like, I would be stressed and concerned about any damage to that camera at all times. So do you really want to put that amount of stress on you? I surely do not. The next thing you should think about and the reason why you should not buy that camera is the file sizes. Because oh boy, you better get ready to rent out a file server facility. So you'll spend hundreds of dollars not only on that SD card, that CF Express card or whatever, you will also need 
space to store your files. And if you film regularly, every week, every day, you will need a bunch load of hard drives or a NAS system with I don't know how many base and you know how expensive storage is? Well, neither do I, but it is expensive. Also, you better upgrade your PC, dude. Because those kind of files with that bitrate require a certain PC to handle. So you want to edit those 4K 120 frames per second things? You better be ready to drop another seven grand on a new computer to edit that. Because I'm telling you, I'm having a pretty chunky computer, but 4K, high bitrate, it's starting to slow down. It gets very, very annoying. The next problem is gonna be though, how are you gonna transfer these files? Camera to NAS, network, hard drives, back to your computer. Those are big files that can take a while. So your entire network better be 10 gigabit ready. Don't come with that one gigabit crap. That's not gonna be sufficient. If you buy yourself a Sony a7S III, no, 10 bit ready file server, new PC, everything. So let's just think about that for a second again. The size, the weight and the cost. It overall just makes for a less enjoyable experience using that camera. Just for the fun of it, think about picking up a GoPro in comparison, just a tiny GoPro and walking around with it. You'll be so much less stressed. You can drop that thing, it's tiny, it's not as heavy, you don't get tired it's not as obnoxious to other people so overall way less stressful more enjoyable shooting experience and if you think you don't mind picking up that amazing huge camera with a huge microphone on top and walking around in public filming yourself talking to a camera and i'll just dare you i dare you pick up your phone go into a public place and talk to your phone and see how uncomfortable that feels and now imagine doing the same thing with a huge camera. And trust you me, just buying a real camera does not make you feel better about it because you might think, oh, all of a sudden I look way more professional. I'll be cool about it. Uh-uh. It's way more uncomfortable with a bigger camera having that huge microphone in your face instead of just holding a phone. It draws so much attention to it and it's so freaking uncomfortable. But then let's be honest for a second. So Sony delivered kind of on all ends here it's just the price and the chunkiness, but let's be honest, I still want it. It looks so freaking darn good. It does everything. And if you're in a professional environment, you take it to shoots, then you don't have to be concerned about the size, the weight or the weird feeling. I mean, then it's absolutely great. But I'm talking to people like me or like you that just use it for YouTube and filming ourselves or our friends. The camera is almost perfect, but I really think I should not get it and you most likely should not get it either. If you compare it to a more value option, an APS-C sized camera, then the slight increase in quality, in my opinion, does not justify the big jump in price difference. Yes, you might get slightly better results than you would get, for example, with an A6600 or Fuji X-T4, but it is at multiple times the cost. And for producing stuff like this, where I just talk like a goofball to a camera, I think that slight increase in quality is absolutely not necessary. I still want it, but I know I shouldn't get it. Also, I can't get it because I'm, I don't have that kind of money. If you do, if you don't care about money, if you piss it away left and right, hey, be my guest, just get that camera. It's freaking amazing. But for normal people, average per people like me, I think we really should not. One thing that excites me though about the A7S III release as well as the Canon R5 and R6 releases is that they showed some big improvements that they finally listened to the people, especially Sony. I mean, Canon kind of screwed up with a lot of things, but even Canon put amazing working IBIS into their R5 and R6. And the thing that gets me excited about this is both companies are gonna release APS-C cameras in the future. I hope in the near future, like an A7000 or the Canon M50 Mark II. And I hope that they take some of the great features of these full frame cameras, put it into the smaller bodies at a more affordable price. And that should be the point in time where we should really consider getting one of these cameras. Because in my opinion, APC cameras, overall versatility way better than full frame cameras. Not even talking about the price. So I'm hoping either that to happen, A7000 or a new Canon EOS M7 or something like that with IBIS please, good dynamic range, give me the flippy screen, give me all of that, I hope that happens or maybe I win the lottery and we'll get the A7S III after all.